Happy Monday all you Minties, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at the Annihilation Conquest Omnibus. This is the new printing from Marvel Comics, so let's do this thing. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us this advanced copy of Annihilation Conquest. Of course, this is the reprint of this omnibus. This one came out a few years ago and eventually went out of print. Now, this book is due out in the direct market on May 12th, and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. So, what we're looking at here is the direct market cover with Wraith. On the left is actually my copy of Annihilation Conquest, the first printing, but it, that is also the cover that they are using for the standard edition this time around. So, this is what both of the covers look like. I love the color palettes that they use for both of these and I assume that they're still going to use this particular image for the spine of the standard edition cover. And then this is the Star-Lord image for the direct market cover. And the back of each of the book. Colors are a little more vibrant, maybe just on my copy of the uh, original printing. Both books retail for $125. Looks like they're using the same font up at the top. A uh, little bit different font here for what it collects. We'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. And then, of course, a new ISBN. And the T Plus is a little bit smaller with the Marvel logo right underneath it. And the other thing, going back to this angle that you may have noticed, is this one is just a little bit thinner. So we'll talk about the differences here and do a comparison in a few. But let's go ahead and look at them under the dust jacket. Identical. And I've always loved that image. Spines are identical. And the image in the back on the backboard is identical. Now, let's get this open and talk just a little bit about what is Annihilation Conquest. Okay, so let's get this opened. That's what the book and page colors look like. And then we have Annihilation Conquest. I've always been a fan of the covers to this series. Here are the table of contents with all the books that are collected in the pages here, as well as the creators of each of the books. As you can see, Dan Abnett, Andy Lanning, completely dominating this particular omnibus, whereas before it was mainly Keith Giffen writing most of the story. Uh, but, you know, you have a few uh, writers like Christos Gage and Javier Grillo, Mark Swack, and Keith Giffen coming back to do Star-Lord. But it's mainly Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning, or what most of us not the cool kids, well maybe the cool kids, like to call DNA. So this is in the aftermath of Annihilation, and this is a follow-up. And it didn't really start off as a follow-up, it started as a Nova story. So it kicks off with Nova, number one. He now has his ongoing series after the events of Annihilation. So this collects Nova 1 through 12, Annual number one, Annihilation Conquest Prologue, very similar to what they did with Annihilation. There was a prologue, uh, and then there was a main series. But before the main series, there were mini series, and that's what they did here. So there's Annihilation Conquest Star Lord, uh, Conquest Quasar, Conquest Wraith, and then Annihilation Conquest one through six, as well as the Annihilation Saga. And before I go any further, I'm sure I'm going to be asked. Is this possible to read without having read Annihilation? 100% yes. It stands on its own. All you really have to know about Annihilation is that there was a huge war and the war is now over. So the characters are picking up the pieces from that previous war. And this introduces us to new villains and reintroduces us to a lot of cosmic characters that we haven't seen for a long time. Now, one of the coolest things they did is in the very back, and I usually don't do this, I don't show this until the end, but I've feel like it's important to show now, they collect the Annihilation Saga. And the Annihilation Saga not only works as a handbook of all the characters that appear through these pages and the pages of Annihilation, but it breaks down exactly what happened in the Annihilation Omnibus. How the story played out, who the surviving members are, which ones died. So this really catches you up to speed with where you need to be before picking this up. And then we'll go back to the extras here in a little bit. But this all kicks off with Nova, Richard Ryder again, taking the world mind because all the Nova Corps are completely wiped out as of now. But, you know, they may resurface. He comes back to Earth, has dealings with Iron Man because of the whole Civil War thing. Uh, actually meets up with Robbie. I really enjoy that story. Finds out that some of his team members from the New Warriors are dead. New Warriors for life, baby. Omnibus Volume 2 incoming. But... 
yeah, he finds out the hard way that he really doesn't have a place at home anymore. So he decides to go back into space and just be useful up there where he thinks he belongs. Then we see Star Lord and then the remaining members of, or then we see Star Lord and the remaining cast of the characters that are still alive from Annihilation. So I love the way that this book is particularly mapped because we have the prologue. Uh, in between issues three and four of Nova, and then we go back to Nova four to show what his role is going to be in the Annihilation Conquest. So I think that's really good that they mapped it that way. And then we get the eventual mini series like Star Lord. Let me just show you some of the artwork from the minis. Then we'll talk about the differences here in a minute. This is the wonderful artwork of Star Lord. And what you're seeing here is what I like to call the beginnings of the Guardians of the Galaxy. The new Guardians of the Galaxy. The Guardians of the Galaxy have been characters that have been around for a long time in the Marvel Universe. However, this is the new Guardians of the Galaxy. These are the new characters that you're probably familiar with. Rocket Raccoon, Groot, Star-Lord, eventually Gamora, Drax. And this is really where James Gunn got a lot of his ideas from from this particular storyline, Annihilation Conquest, and then after this, they get their own miniseries. I love the artwork in this too. I think it's unique. Uh, you get returning characters like Captain Universe, Bug, and Death Cry, and not all of them make it out. And then we have the miniseries of Quasar. We have a new Quasar, and that is Phyla, Captain Marvel's daughter, and she's joined by Moondragon. And each of these miniseries serves as a quest. Like, they're all looking for something. They're, they're looking for a relic or something from old times that can help against their fight because they have a new nemesis. And this, this right here, I love this series. This is Wraith, and he's the guy on the variant cover. And he was very, how do I put it? underutilized when he came to the cosmic saga after annihilation conquest he was such a badass when he appeared i love the artwork of this kyle Holtz, and for some reason they just didn't use him enough afterwards i always like the character and i get excited every time i see him appear from time to time in the marvel universe but he's one of the miniseries and of course you're probably wondering wait weren't there four miniseries in the original annihilation Yes, there were. But now you only need three because you have Nova playing parts in Annihilation Conquest. So he has his own ongoing series. And of course, all of it leads into Annihilation Conquest. So all the characters come together and they find out who their big nemesis are in Annihilation Conquest. Now this, again, written by Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning, but it is drawn by Tom Rainey, one of my favorite underrated artist and i don't want to even say underrated because i know there's a lot of people that appreciate him i mean he's had work published everywhere dc marvel he's worked on uncanny x-men ultimate x-men just a bunch of titles but i never felt like he got his own flagship title but anyway that's just my two cents and i think he does a phenomenal job of drawing the events here in annihilation conquest now i can't flip too much through here in case you haven't read it because there's a lot of returning characters not just from annihilation but also from the pages of the marvel cosmic universe in the past a lot of characters that jim starlin helped create or write but you, here we have some returning characters like the Super Scroll and Ronan and his crew. And then, as I mentioned, the formation of... Oh, I forgot Mantis was in the group, too. Love her character in this. Uh, and the formation of the new Guardians of the Galaxy. Because after this, after they defeat the bad guys, spoilers, who's going to protect the galaxy? Awesome. And you'll notice that when he first starts out... Star-Lord is looking a little bit different. Don't worry, he makes changes through this particular volume that kind of looks like the way he does in the Guardians of the Galaxy that you're probably familiar with. Now, as far as the extras, we've talked about the Annihilation Saga, and like I said, not only does it catch you up, but it also works as a handbook guide. So you get to find out who all these characters are, where they first got their start, and then in the back, we have some lovely character design sketches Adi Granoff supplying the covers for Nova and the process of the covers and yes that is Nick Klein's annual number one but it's a take on the man called Nova number one love that that is a Clint Langley yeah uh, it was just used as a house ad and then there's a wonderful afterward now let's look at the binding so here's that eye after stretching the spine not that big 
But uh, I did want to point out that this one here is printed at the iMac printer in Turkey. So let's do a comparison, including the paper quality that they've used in this compared to the original one. And we'll look at a couple of spread pages. Okay, so original printing, new printing. And this is where we break it down. Just do a comparison of each. They have the almost same color to the bookend pages. Fly in leaf is a little bit thicker than this one here. And just to look at the image that's collected on the inside. Like I mentioned earlier, maybe the colors are just a little bit more vibrant in the original printing. And you can probably tell from here, the way that this is laying over, that there's less gutter loss, of course, in the original printing than there is here in the new printing. And let's just uh, do another comparison here towards the beginning. Just the differences here in the splash page and the way that the books are laying over. You got this gutter curve here that's giving you some gutter loss. It's not terrible, but I did want to point that out. Here you have a comparison in the spread pages here. Uh, these are from the Annihilation Prologue by Mike Perkins. Again, bit of a gutter curve, so you do lose some artwork in there. Not very much. Let's look in the middle. Here we have one towards the Wraith miniseries. Colors are just a little bit more vibrant here, a little more dull in the newer printing. And this is the way they both lay over. By the way, exact same page count, 872 pages. And here we are towards the back. And this is the issue of Annihilation Conquest number six. These are the differences in the spread pages. You can judge for yourself. I don't think there's much of a difference, but I know this bothers some people in it. I get it. The paper quality is thinner than the original printing here. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest book with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and the build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking it up, if you already own the original one. Uh, what do you think of the covers? Which one are you going to go for? Again, this was the Uncanny Omar, and if you have any more questions, please leave all those questions down below. I'll be happy to answer them. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. More importantly, all of you stay healthy, stay safe, and much love.